Imagine seeing photos of your favourite subjects, whether it's vintage cars, landscapes or cute rodents, morphing into one another. Well, that mesmerising effect is called image interpolation. And the method I'm showing today is powered by Animate Diff in ComfyUI. The image interpolation process generates transitional frames between images in order to create the illusion that one image is magically transforming into the next. Rather than just abruptly switching from one picture to the next like in a slideshow, image interpolation is always on the move to blend the images in interesting and sometimes slightly unexpected ways. Yes, hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery, as today I peel back the layers on this futuristic technology so that you too can master these slick, interpolated transitions to level up your own content. The techniques used to interpolate between images have advanced somewhat over the years, along with computational power. Simple cross-dissolves began interpolating images some years ago now, but newer algorithms leverage things such as morphing and warping to create these fancy effects. Stylegan, Artbreeder, Film, Diffmorph and others you might have already seen on my channel all have ways to achieve this effect. But the images are typically unanimated, whereas Animate Diff adds these motions such as flowing water along with the transition. On my previous Animate Diff videos, one question I got asked was, how do I put an image in the middle of an Animate Diff AI animation? Well, this is the answer. While there are a whole bunch of settings which may look slightly complicated at first, don't worry because after you've finished watching this video, you should be in a great position to start building your own without any worry. The repository for this node goes by the name of Steerable Motion. And just like almost every other node, you can install it by using Comfy UI Manager. There it is, got it open, adding a custom node, Steerable Motion. You can just click Install. Right, okay, so that's really simple to get it going. We'll move that out of the way. And there is the Batch Creative Interpolation node. That's quite an interesting one as it features both ControlNet and IP adapter all in one. As a quick overview of this workflow, essentially it just goes from left to right. The images on the left over here are your inputs. I've just got four here as an example, but you can remove or add as many as you like thanks to this Make Image Batch node. For example, I can just drag a noodle out here. Let's put it in a really inconvenient place and load image. There we go. I can pop another image there. And these inputs just keep growing so you can add or remove anything as you like. Moving over to the right a bit, we've got the model loaders. Now these are all fairly standard, as you can see at the top there. We've got the IP adapter models and then the standard stable diffusion checkpoint and VAE. Continuing over to the right, we've got the FizzNodes batch prompt schedule, which you might already be familiar with from my previous Animate Diff workflows and videos. It's a simple schedule with a frame number and a prompt followed by another frame number and a prompt, which it will then interpolate between. Leaving them blank is absolutely fine, so just leave them blank maybe to start with, run the workflow, get an idea of what's going on, and then move up to adding prompts once you're happy with how the whole thing works. These prompts are mostly to help adherence or just to, you know, add different things in. Maybe you do want to add some flowing water in, or perhaps you've got a nice picture of a rodent, but it ends up like a cat. For example, if we have a quick look at the video we've got on the screen there now, we've got a nice cat and a little bonsai tree, some stairs and a person, and there's an alien. But that alien face is quite different to the one we've got there. So what you could do is add some prompts in at that particular area just to get it looking a little bit more alien-like. 
And of course, just underneath that, you've got the standard negative prompts as well. OK, so next up is the star of the show. We've had a quick look at this already, the Batch Creative Interpolation node. It may look complex, but don't worry, after a couple of times running the workflow for yourself, you'll soon get the hang of what's going on here. There's loads of notes over on the side there, and we've got a pretty graph we'll look at in just a minute. For the most part, the default settings are absolutely fine. But don't forget, at the top here, you've got your control net name. So there you want to load your tile control net. There are a number of settings here, such as type of frame distribution and this one here, all set to linear. Linear is like a sort of automatic mode, which will make those nice, smooth interpolations for you just by itself. There we've got a default of 16 frames, which is the same as the default context length for Animate Diff. With linear set, you don't need to enter any numbers in these little boxes. They are there, but they don't actually do anything if you've got it set to linear. In order to use the numbers that you put in the boxes, you're going to have to change that from linear to dynamic, and then it will do that instead of that. All right, let's just pop that back to linear. Again, with the keyframe influence and control net strength, you've got options for linear and dynamic, all of which are perhaps best understood by looking at the little graph you get over to the right. Here at the top of the graph, we've got a very handy legend. So for example, if you're looking for the control net strength distribution, which goes from 0 to 0 0.4, there they are. So you've got a green one, a red one, these solid lines. So there it starts off at 0 0.4, drops down to 0. Then you've got this next one here starting from naught, going all the way up to 0 0.4 and then back down again. And the same for all of the other control nets because it's linear. One thing you may want to do is just play with the values to see how the graph comes out. And the easiest way to do that is to disable these other nodes. You can bypass them or set them to never. Either will do. So let's turn that one off. And we'll uh, bypass that one just to show it doesn't make any difference. There we go. We'll set that to never. Right, so all it's doing now is it's just going through. It's going to load your images, load those, load any prompts, and then run this node, which is fairly quick. And then you can get the output of this graph. OK, so let's give that a go and see what happens. All right, so say I change that 128 to 90 and then queue up a prompt. How do you think that is going to change the graph? If your answer was, it's not going to change the graph at all, then you're completely correct. Because remember, I've got this distribution set to linear. All right, if we change that to dynamic, then it's going to use the numbers which I used. And as you can see, now the graph looks completely different. To turn the groups back on again, you can just set nodes to always. We'll do it for that one, that one, and that one as well. There we go. So now we've got all the nodes back on. Those final groups are all just pretty standard. For example, here we've got the animate diff one, which goes into a case sampler, which then pops over to image interpolation to help smooth that animation out a little bit. And finally, a video save node as well. OK, so let's just run this through. Now, to start with, I'll take that image five off. So we're just doing four images. Let's pick a couple of random ones in here. There we go. All right, so now we've got a completely different set of images. That's basically all on default. So we've got nothing there in the prompts. These are all on the defaults here. We've got linear. So let's just run that through and see what comes out. Now, of course, being an animation, this will take a little while. So I'll speed up time now. That's finished running through. So we've got our animation there. We'll just do a little zoom in. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I do like that. See, everything's moving as it goes through. So it's not just translating one image into the other. It's keeping them moving the entire time. We've got these little bits and the hair. Now, you might have noticed that I don't actually have a person in there. It's turned that into a person, even though it should be a little alien. Now, as mentioned, you can change that 
in this batch prompt schedule up here. So you'll have to have a look at the frames, compare it over to the graph here and you'll see, okay, so that's image number three. So I'd probably want to maybe start doing some prompt interpolation between 20 and 50, that sort of thing. Another thing you can do is to change the control net weights. Now, while this will make it a little bit more like your picture, if you increase that value, it will also reduce the amount of motion as well, which is why I tend to prefer using the prompts. If we also take a quick look at this video as it transitions there into the last frame, you may see, oh, hang on, that's lasting a little bit longer than all of the others. Well, that's because I've got the batch size set to 84 down here. So it goes well beyond that graph and essentially just stays at that level. Of course, if we wanted to have it a little bit lower, so it's a bit more linear, you could drop that down to 64 and that is your animation length. Like it says there, batch size would be the number of images you want to generate plus the interpolation buffer size, which is four. By default, you've got those four there, which is the buffer in this node. If you're adding even more images than four, which is the default you'll get in the workflow, then you'll probably want to change that batch size. Maybe add 16 frames for each new image that you have. You can grab this workflow for free from the A Very Comfy Nerd website, so why not give it a go? And if you thought that was cool, why not check out this next video?